The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports! Well, the Blackhawks are at the Avalanche tonight, the last game before the home opener on Saturday against the Golden Knights that will literally be a madhouse over there at the UC for Connor Bedard's home showing. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Now, the Timberwolves are at the Madhouse tonight against the Bulls. That's the last game before the regular season and the Thunder at the Bulls home opener next Wednesday, which Case has put a bet on that. Case, the producer, joins us and has a bit of a bet on that. And Kenzie is working on the wheel of misfortune for Case if he loses that bet. He's taking the Thunder in that game. I don't know what the spread is now. Has it changed? I can look real quick. All I said, for, for anybody that missed this, a week and a half ago, we were talking in sports. I said, just so everybody knows, the Thunder is like, the, they're the really sexy basketball pick this year. Basketball nerds are obsessed with this team. And it turned into me basically being lit on fire if the Bulls happen to beat the Thunder. It spiraled out of control so quickly. Is um, that on the Wheel of Misfortune lighting case on fire? It's That'd on Kenzie's. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> be fun, sure. <laughs> uh, we'll get you a little suit for protection. Oh, thank you. Yeah. If you sign a waiver. <laughs> Would you, would you sign a waiver? Would you, you know, go for it in the company and say they made it, made me do it, so I want to sue now? Okay. I, I'm, I'm not signing a waiver. I'm going to take this company for everything they're worth. Yeah. That's the goal. Well, let us know we should still light them on fire. <laughs> Just so you know, Thunder are favored by one point in that game. Very, Ooh. very small spread. Very right. Go to DraftKings, put your bet on there, and uh, maybe join Case on the Thunder, or just uh, maybe bet on the Bulls to surprise us all and do well this year. Um, talking about the Bears situation going on, it looks like Justin Fields will not play most likely this weekend because they're waiting and waiting to see if he can actually grip the football after dislocating his thumb and popping it back in in the game last week. Um, so we will see, uh, you know, Bajent. They've also signed Trace McSorley. Did you buy a jersey yet, anybody? I, I'm on the McSorley hive, baby. We're buzzing <laughs> around the city. Still not sure if he's, it's available as Bears Trace McSorley jersey I've yet. I've got a guy. I've got a guy in the street corner. Now, if the Bears continue on the path and they get the number one overall pick, USC's Caleb Williams uh, certainly is a guy that everybody said, draft him, you know, move on from Justin Fields. Uh, they've called him the best prospect in history. Big statement coming out of college. But also, there's been reports on there that if he gets drafted, he wants part of the team. He wants ownership of the team that he gets drafted by. Because in his words, with the new NIL deals where college players can now make money, yes. he can make more money in college if he stays one more year than his rookie contract would be for an NFL team, which is a, if you're number one overall pick, you probably make about $24 million over four years. He's saying he can make more than that average, I guess, his senior year. And this wait. is like, okay, listen, you laugh now, but everyone laughed at Michael Jordan's mom when she was like, I want him to like get continued part of sales. What's of, the word? Of Nike. He wanted yeah. uh, royalties. Oh, royalties. Yeah. Thank yeah. God, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. everyone's like, no one does that. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> well, it's a dangerous statement. Whoever his agent is doing this or somebody's in his ears going like, hey, man, get part of the team. Get like 0.5% of the team. The team is worth $5 billion. Now everybody's going to ask for this, going at the number one overall picks well, if, if, if it goes through. It's not allowed. Aaron Rodgers tried to do this, and the NFL said, no, you cannot become part owner of the Jets. What are you talking about? Yeah, but it's a it's a new world. I don't know. Each year, just something changes. No, it's, it's, I, it's, don't, I don't like this whatsoever. Kenzie, there, there's got to be people in your life who you just sometimes you hear what they say and you watch what they do, and you go, what? What planet are you on? Because that's where I'm at with Caleb Williams. I would actually recommend the Bears stay away from him because uh -huh. when you say things like, I want to be a part owner of the team, and he released a statement a few weeks ago saying, there's only five NFL teams that I really even consider playing for. I just have to think there's awful people in his ear giving him horrible, horrible ideas. Um, I guess at least... Uh he wants to be invested in the Bears. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Most people don't want to be. He, yeah. won't, uh, he won't, like, throw the game because he's part owner. That's, That's true. Right. There's some security there. Do you think if he sees, like, a, a vendor give away a free beer, he jumps into the stairs? Hey, that's my money! That's my money! No, 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 no free nachos! No for nobody! he wants to, like, also host at the arena? Like, I'm going to get more names up. I want to make an experience. I want more money flowing in here. We're over here in Section 300 mm -hmm. talking to Mike and James from Chicago Heights. Hey, dude, it's first down. You got to get down there and play. A little too invested in everything in money-making scheme. Okay, I mean, I... I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. Oh. I, I got to be honest. This is why I like you, because I never would have thought that, oh, if he's part owner, he'll try harder. But I, he I really, I can't argue that. He, uh, he's so well. Yeah. And, like, I don't think he'd, he'd you know, you know, head out, like, a year later. I guess not. He's like, However, this is my city. This is literally my team. Uh, I got to be here. <laughs> he was a hot piece of garbage at the Notre Dame game I saw. I Notre thought Dame. you were going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. 
wow. Really? <laughs> <laughs> So something like there? Yeah. <laughs> he did not. Well, it's Michael B. Jordan, now Caleb Williams. Oh, he's handsome. Caleb Williams, yeah. a handsome man. Brian stood out near the buses, like waiting for him. Look, we're not getting, we're not going down that path of yesterday in sports, where I talked about taking a peek in the bathroom. Now we're on Caleb Williams, me saying he's a handsome man. He is handsome. Wait, sure. the hot piece. Well, would I want a peek? Sure. Of Caleb Williams. I'd, want, I'd take a peek. Because you, you want to size it up. You want to see if you're, you know. Size him up. How are you, how are you, how are you doing in comparison? The peni. I know. I already did the innuendo. Oh, I I just say it. <laughs> so weird beef going on with MLB continuing today. The Phillies uh, destroying the Diamondbacks, you know, 2 nothing. Now heading out to Arizona. Jimmy Eat World, the band Jimmy Eat World, are from Phoenix. They're from Arizona. And Zach Lynn, the drummer, put this out saying, because there's a lot of uh, hate going toward Arizona right now because the tickets for an NLCS game are going for $20. The fans in Arizona have... That sounds- are, Lovely. Yeah, it Everyone's, does. People complain about the wrong things. Yeah. <laughs> My God. How going, great would that be? The Bears thing is real. It'd be amazing. Know? Demand should go that low when your team sucks, but they're really good, so they shouldn't be that low, those price of tickets. It's embarrassing. Yes, yeah. but they're down 2-0, and they've checked out. They've checked out, Arizona. So, I mean, it's not 90 degrees there. They're not going to the people baseball game. People just get about the wrong things. I'm like, that's that's great. I can't wait to bring my family. So, Zach Lynn, the drummer of Jimmy Eat World, put out a tweet saying, listen, Phillies fans, go ahead and talk your S. Blah, blah, blah. Your payroll's only $130 million more than the D-backs. Your team is young and playing with house money, win or lose. Our team is young and playing with house money, win or lose. Oh, is he part owner? <laughs> <laughs> and he got so much hate and responses that were hilarious that Case put up at Q101.com. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else finds us funny, but I just think it's really entertaining to think about the drummer of Jimmy World firing off tweets at random people. He was going after Brewers fans. He was going after Giants fans. He was going after Phillies fans. He was mad online at everybody. Also, answering every tech tweet yes, that exactly. came through. Like, uh, there was a tweet called Flyers Nation. Uh, and they said, with all due respect, Shut the F up, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> and also people comparing. He talked about him being a young team. People put up the stats of the Phillies actually being a younger team than the D-backs. Of course, they have some great rookies on there, young players that are going to be good going forward. But he answered every tweet, every hate thing that came at him. Uh, very, very interesting that the drummer of Jimmy Eat World isn't busier than that right now. Well, yeah, they just got off the road. They were they were on tour all summer, but he's he's got time to chill now. It puts us in an interesting spot being at Q101 where – we can either root for your happiness in the Phillies, or we can root for Jimmy Eat World and the Diamondbacks. And me personally, I'm not sure which one I want to root for. Well, happy wife, happy life. My wife's from Philadelphia, so the Phillies were going that range. And if you want a baked goods again, maybe you should jump on the Phillies bandwagon. She made you a cake for your birthday. That was a while ago. What does that have to do? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. She's going to be like, F your birthday because he likes a different team. I think she will. She holds a grudge. These Philly people are built different. They're, <laughs> they're wired incorrectly. Also, the Rangers are getting, uh, they got smoked yesterday, actually, by the <laughs> Astros. Brian didn't argue that. He's just said Philly people are wired incorrectly, and your wife's from Philly, and you said nothing. I thought he said different. No, she, how dare you? Uh, uh, how dare you? It loses its luster, Brian, after Kenzie like, has to correct you. He's like, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord, Brian. There goes your cake. That's all I'm saying. No cake for your birthday. All right. Uh, there may not be a cake for your birthday either. You said nothing. I kind of did. I'm sorry, Megan. I love you. And uh, Case uh, is a bad person, Keep and he digging. will no longer be on the show. Keep digging. Can I fire Case? No, because no, I like I... him more than you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You actually can't. So if we take a group vote, it's not going to... I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> we all have to raise our hands. Have I made enough, you know... Come back for that now? No. For Megan to like that now? Talk about no. the Rangers, Brian. Okay, the Rangers. I lost to the Astros 8-5 to five after being up 2 nothing. Game 4 is tonight. Rangers are had Creed. They've been using Creed to inspire themselves after the All-Star break. Uh, when they were playing terribly, they used the songs of Creed to inspire them. Well, Creed showed up at the Astros-Rangers game yesterday. Now, the Rangers lost that game maybe because Creed showed up. Here was them on camera last night. Hello, Creed. Are you there? Here for the A. What's up, everybody? We are Creed, here for the ALCS Championship. Go Rangers. Rangers go, go MLB, Rangers. baby. Go, he said go MLB. He said go MLB. Was he Rob Lowe? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Very weird. And, and Scott Stapp, boy, he looks like he's gotten a bunch of fillers. Well, do you know what he's been doing recently? I don't. Okay, so if you've ever had the thought in the last five years of, God, I wonder what Scott Stapp from Creed is up to, he recently played Frank Sinatra 
in a Ronald Reagan biopic. Now, this movie is not out yet, but uh, it's Dennis Quaid. It's his movie about Ronald Reagan, huh. and he casts Scott Stapp from Creed as Frank Sinatra <laughs> in the movie. Really? And when this comes out, we are having a viewing is party in the like lounge. Is this in theaters or on Netflix? Do you know? I get the feeling it's going to be a movie that only church groups go to go see, but we're going to get our hands on a copy of it. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be on a streaming service. I think, about, be? I think it'll be on a website. <laughs> yeah. You know, like just that you have to buy. I think, like, that's what I think it's going to be on. Have you seen the things they release on streaming services? <laughs> that's true. This well, is going to be like top quality. Find the release date for that, please. We'll I, have that it's, for you. it's been filmed. It's in the can. They just they don't have a release date for it. <laughs> no wonder. That doesn't sound good. Can you imagine that being in production limbo? Like, oh, what are we doing with this Reagan biopic? Should we recast Scott Stapp and redo the whole movie? I'm not sure. We don't like how it came <laughs> out. I'm not sure. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q. 101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. So I looked up that movie Case was talking about, the Reagan movie. Oh, yeah. Where's it going to be? Where Scott Staff plays Frank Sinatra, Scott Staff from Creed. Now, on their Wikipedia page, it says the film was scheduled to be released in 2021, but now will be released in 2023. But then we're almost to the end of 2023. That's what I'm saying. I can't it's a Christmas fi- movie. I can't movie. find it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. Ronald Reagan loved Christmas. It did say that filming had shut down after several crew members tested positive for COVID when they first started filming it during the pandemic. And every time they tried to restart filming it, more guys got COVID that worked on the crew. I don't know why that's funny, but that's really funny. It just kept on happening. A plagued movie, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, So, so far, uh, we'll we'll, listen, as good journalists, we'll keep you posted. If everybody had it, couldn't they just stayed on set? At a certain point, like, well, we're all, we're just in this together. I know. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. It really you know does. What I'm saying? Yeah, if they all have it, everybody. If sh- every single person had it. Yeah. Well, so we can just kind of continue on. And, <laughs> there. and action. All right. Listen, we're doing a movie about someone 40 years ago. We have to get this movie out. Otherwise, we can't wait one more year. Otherwise, it won't be topical anymore. It's a cliffhanger. What happened with Ronald Reagan? I want to know. What? <laughs> All right, three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. What's happening now is Clash with Kenzie and your chance to get into the Halloween Bash guaranteed entry. It's free. This thing, by the way, with Weathers next Friday night at the Cubby Bear costume contest, tons of prizes and great music. Uh, Weathers will be going as Green Day as well for Halloween, so he'll be performing as Green Day. Three one two five nine one eighty three hundred to compete against Kenzie in a trivia contest. Clash with Kenzie. Call now. <laughs> The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. So I looked up that movie Case was talking about, the Reagan movie. Oh, yeah, where's it going to be? Where Scott Staff plays Frank Sinatra, Scott Staff from Creed. Now, on their Wikipedia page, it says the film was scheduled to be released in 2021, but now will be released in 2023. But then... We're almost to the end of 2023. That's what I'm saying. I can't can't find it. (laughs) It's a Christmas movie. Ronald Reagan loved Christmas. It did say that filming had shut down after several crew members tested positive for COVID when they first started filming it during the pandemic. And every time they tried to restart filming it, more guys got COVID that worked on the crew. I don't know why that's funny, but that's really funny. It just kept on happening. A plagued movie, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, So, so far, uh, we'll we'll, listen, as good journalists, we'll keep you posted. If everybody had it, couldn't they just stayed on set? (laughs) <laughs> At a certain point, like, well, we're all, we're just in this together. I know. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. It really you does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if they all have it, everybody can... If every single person had it. Yeah. Well, listen, we can just kind of continue on. And <laughs> there. And action. All right. Listen, we're doing a movie about someone 40 years ago. We have to get this movie out. Otherwise, we can't wait one more year. Otherwise, it won't be topical anymore. Well, it's a cliffhanger. What happened with Ronald Reagan? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> All right, three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. What's happening now is Clash with Kenzie and your chance to get into the Halloween Bash guaranteed entry. It's free. This thing, by the way, with Weathers next Friday night at the Cubby Bear costume contest, tons of prizes and great music. Uh, Weathers will be going as Green Day as well for Halloween, so he'll be performing as Green Day. Three one two five nine one eighty three hundred to compete against Kenzie in a trivia contest. Clash with Kenzie. Call now. The Q one hundred one Morning Crew on Q. 101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. (laughs) 
let the battle begin. Q101. And this battle is for the guaranteed entry passes for our Halloween pop-up a week from Friday. Everybody can come. Everybody listening should come. This is the Halloween party in Wrigleyville. Uh, but guaranteed entry, well, make sure you get right in. Because there's only so many people who can fit in. And uh, we got Weathers performing. And they'll do a set as Green Day as well for Halloween, which is amazing. Chloe, checking in from Yorkville, competing against Kenzie today. Uh, tell us something a little bit about yourself, Chloe. I am the biggest Weathers fan, at least that I know of. Hmm. I found Weathers because of Q101 earlier this year by getting to see them in the lounge. And I just fell in love with them instantly. And then I got to see them in August. And I met a bunch of new friends and... We're so excited for this bash. Oh, stop it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Chloe, I was going to give you these. <laughs> but Brian did the serial killer sound and said that wasn't very nice of Brian. <laughs> Sorry, Chloe, I had your back for a second there. <laughs> hey, listen, we love the people that support all the free things and get in those free things, like the lounge, and now you're going to see them, of course, for free this way, but guaranteed entry. I am guessing you'll get there early and be right up front. Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely. Oh, see, I'm excited for her. This is awesome. It's great. Absolutely. <laughs> love the passion. All right, here we go. First, first one to five wins. Listen carefully. If Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same with you. Call heads or tails right now, Chloe. Heads. Ah, it's tails. Mm. Oh. oh. Not oh, starting not off. Not a great start. No, 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 not a good one. <laughs> You'll be fine. Is it gonna, I don't know if it's going to go well. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Kenzie, how long is the NBA shot clock? Um, 24 seconds. 24 seconds is right. Good like job. My, like my birthday on the 24th. Oh, that's how you remember that's the shot clock? Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's literally how I do. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, Chloe, what country standout won the fourth season of American Idol? Uh, Three. Was it the U.S.? No. Sorry. The fourth season? The fourth season. What country standout won the fourth season of American Probably Idol? Probably Carrie Underwood. It was Carrie okay. Underwood. Absolutely. Oh. Honestly, when you first started asking the question, I thought it was a question about countries. It took me a second. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Did that, didn't that kind of confuse you too, girl? I'm like, what mm. country? Uh, right? Well, Russia. Yeah. Russia won on America. Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Russia's got talent, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, you know. All right, well, it's 2 nothing. It's back to Kenzie. Uh, Kenzie, according to his elementary school principal, what 1994 title character of an Oscar-winning movie had an IQ of 75? Wow. That's a you long put a question. Comma in there? Yeah. What's, holy crap. I took a big breath before I read that question. Can you read it again? Really? Okay. Yeah. Re well, I'm sorry. That was, <laughs> okay. that was a paragraph. Uh, I would like to, I don't even know if there's a question. What did you say? According to his elementary school principal, what 94 title character of an Oscar winning movie had an IQ of 75? Three. I don't. Two. I don't know. I don't know what I heard. <laughs> Chloe, do you know what you heard in that question? Yes, I do. And I'm going to say Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Remember, the principal goes like, he's going to have to go to a special school. And then. <laughs> Could you have just done the thing? Like, hey, what person said this? <laughs> like, that would have been way easier. Also, why is that the line from the movie you remember? Uh, well, because it starts with that. Then, of course, it goes to Sally Field, like, you know. Oh, that. is that what she hooks up with him? Yeah, so the hibb hibbity yeah. dibbity with the principal to get him into the regular school. Oh, my God. I think I missed that well, scene in the movie. I don't remember, don't remember that. that. No, I don't. Well, oh. Forrest covers his eyes and ears. Maybe you did, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, then, and then when the principal walks out, Forrest goes, hey, hey, hey. Oh, my God. I know. I was like... That, I would have, if I were that man, I would have been terrified. <laughs> I thought that it was like, it seems like an origin story for becoming a serial killer when he starts doing that. That was terrifying. Uh, well, because he goes, like, your mama sure cares about your schooling. <laughs> in Forrest Gump? In Forrest Gump. You don't Gump. remember any of this? Yeah. No. And then he's imitating him, like, having sex with his mom. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, <laughs> he goes ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's actually it's actually supposed to be a very upsetting scene. <laughs> it's not good. I know right now it sounds funny, but it's uh, 
It's not. That sounds like the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh. oh my god, the thing is that he touches him after. You know, he puts his hand oh, on his shoulder. Oh, come oh, on. A sweaty oh. man. Oh, he was still oh. like, he was still fixing his clothes. It was disgusting. It is just great. Your I mama should sure cares this. about your schooling. Uh, that, if that was the man that came to my door, my kid would just be going to the school and then they got hit him. Oh. That is your problem. Oh, <laughs> oh god. All right, what are we doing? Well, it's two to one. <laughs> That's back to Chloe. <laughs> All right, Chloe. Uh, in pool, what color is the eight ball? It's black. It's black. There you go. Tie game two two. <laughs> Oh, my God. You're such a child. What is wrong with you? Oh, God. <laughs> Stop. That. My poor kid was traumatized, you psychopath. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> if oh. I come over and I hear Harper doing that, I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Oh it's, God. it's two to two. It's back to Kenzie. Oh, Ken- my God. Ask me a question. <laughs> Kenzie, how many boroughs are there in New York? Five. There's five boroughs in New York. That's right. Good job. Thank you. Uh, oh, boy. Chloe, what is the main <laughs> substance used to make a crayon? Wax. Wax is right. 3-3. Three, three. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Back to Kenzie. Yes. Uh, Floyd Mayweather is a professional athlete in what sport? Uh, boxing. Boxing's right. Four to three. He also cannot read. Oh, jeez. He can't? No, that's like, I'm not being, that's not being me being yeah. insensitive. He cannot read. He's you, not You know what literate. he does? Which is interesting. <laughs> oh, boy. When he goes on vacations, he doesn't pack suitcases. He just buys everything when he gets there. That's impressive. Is that, it's like, uh, yeah. that's a different kind of money. That's, money. that's like Because I get upset if I leave my toothpaste. I'm like, oh, this hotel's going to take me for everything <laughs> yeah. I have. You know why he can't read? Why, why is that? Because his mom did <laughs> to Chloe. Ask her a question, please. Oh, my oh boy. God. Chloe. I'm going to just give her the ticket. <laughs> I'm so over it. Hey, Chloe. Yeah? Uh, what two articles of clothing are tokens in the standard Monopoly game? Um, is it a shoe yeah. and a tie? No. Oh. oh. Kenzie. It is a shoe. Yep. And a shirt. No. Oh. It's a shoe and a top hat. Mm. You know what? You know the problem is in our house? Accessory. Yeah. The problem is in our house is a not a big surprise. We have the Cubs version of Monopoly. So you have a jersey, a baseball cap. Oh, God. I'm like, we have all these other ones. That's brutal. <laughs> oh, no. I was a baseball cap. <laughs> uh, we have a different version. All right. Speaking of the Cubs, this goes to Chloe. No, this goes to Kenzie. Oh. This is Kenzie for the win. Oh, boy. Really? Oh, oh <laughs> yes. Yes. my God. What, I don't... <laughs> what Cubs player can be seen on the Restore Hair billboards? Oh, Ian Happ. Ian Happ is right. <laughs> Happy to have hair. But for the love of God, Chloe's getting these tickets because of what she just endured. <laughs> Holy crap, what a miserable experience for her. All right, Chloe, you, you get the tickets anyway. Yeah, How we're about sending that? you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I have to go through all that. I'll see if I can pull myself together to get out there. I know. I want to see your Forrest Gump outfit yeah. at the show. Right. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. All right. The Q101 Morning Cruise Clash with Kenzie on Q101. Well, if you like free stuff and you didn't win that, remember, coming up at 8, 25 minutes away, we have Burt Kreischer tickets, The Machine, at the United Center, 8 a.m. with Brian and Kenzie. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. So we're about 12 minutes away from Burt Kreischer tickets, 8 a.m. Burt Kreischer at the United Center. You'll get those from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Now we're talking about, or at least getting on the phones, for places you've been banned and why. What happened? 312-591-8300 right now. Do that. Uh, For example, Chandler checked in and said, I got kicked out of Universal Studios for making out with my boyfriend on the Cat in the Hat ride when I was 14 at Universal Studios. During the ride, a worker said, this isn't the tunnel of love over the speaker. And we were escorted out of the park. Not only the ride, but the park. Damn. It's a lot. You go in there. You probably picked the most 
kid-friendly section, like the cat in the hat ride. Yeah, 14 years old. Uh, they kicked them out of the park. Come on. What do you mean? I mean, they're just making out. They're just starting to discover each other in love, right? Oh, my gosh. What? You know what that reminds me of? Oh, no, what? It reminds me of the scene from <laughs> Vacation where he's like, I think he's going to pork her dad. And he's like, <laughs> he might pork her. Because <laughs> they're like 14 and make it out. <laughs> Come That's on. so good. Um, listen, I have a story I want to share, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to share it because it makes me, it might be the worst story about me ever. About why I got banned. And I'll tell you I what. Gotta be, I gotta be honest. Mm. It's gonna be tough to top, to top your, some... <laughs> your worst story ever. I, I will tell you this I was banned from the Laser Quest in Downers Grove. Laser Quest? And for what I did there at the Laser Quest in Downers Grove. You try to circumcise yourself <laughs> with a <the> gun? <laughs> Here. Okay, Here. I, I'm not sure I'm going to tell the story, but I because uh, it's really bad. But um, you're Ke- going to tell it. I, I'm listen. I don't know about this. Uh, yes, but, you do. But Kevin's checking. By the way, the reason we're talking about this is because Martin Scorsese, the the director of Goodfellas, just did a recent interview where he said after he made Goodfellas, he was banned from Italian restaurants, certain ones, because they feel like he revealed too much about how the mob works and he made Italians look bad. What? It, yeah, that, that there was certain. What about like, like uh, what's the other? The Godfather. Like, yeah, that was way early. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what happened with the Godfather, but you know, Goodfellas. Well, they Do they honestly think we didn't know that crimes were happening? <laughs> oh my God! Plus, Goodfellas is one of the greatest movies of all time. There's no without question, and he was certainly banned from some I restaurants. I never thought that Italian restaurants were like the cause of it. Well, they, 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 you have Italian restaurants, a bad name. But they were saying like, you know, you're not welcome here anymore with the, us Italians because you made us look bad. Yeah, there's a bunch of Italians in the movie. Exactly. All Italian. Yeah. And they're all happy about they made a nice big payday and made the best movie of all time without oh, question. Oh, jeez. All right, so uh, Kevin's taking in from Chicago. Kevin, ahoy. Ahoy, how's it going? Yeah, where were you banned and why? Uh, in 2001, junior year of Notre Dame High School, I was asked to never enter the school ever again. <laughs> I couldn't get my bags, couldn't get my clothes. Uh, I had decided at communion to not eat the body of Christ and to put it in my pocket to save it for later, Whoa. to throw it as a Frisbee and hit uh, someone in the head. Oh, God. How big was so the body it, of Christ? It was Christ? called desecration of the body of Christ, they called it. Well, it is, and uh, but it's the size of a silver dollar, pretty much, right? Right, right. It, it didn't hurt. It was a little wafer. It blows in the wind. I was gonna say, how big do you guys get? You guys got like life size ones? Like how big? <laughs> life size. It's the body actual Christ. body. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you throw it and hurt somebody. I'm like, what? What's going on over there? We just got a little little piece of bread. It was. A, it was like a one of those fat heads of Jesus made out of bread. <laughs> cut out. Yeah, cut cardboard out. cutouts. <laughs> um, that would have been better. Oh, yeah. so you were asked now, and you have have you stepped foot back in there? Have you snuck in for like a no, game I or something? Get my bags. They. No, could, couldn't even get my bags or anything. They said that was it. And then uh, they dropped a dime on me to other schools. I had to go interview to other schools, and they warned them about me. So I oh. couldn't get into half the schools in the city. The thrower, the thrower of bread, the body mm. of Christ. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> when I was, like, four, um, we were at church for a very long time. It was, like, one of those two-and-a-half-hour services. Yeah. And communion was happening. So here I see my parents with, like, bread and juice, and I was like, can I have a sip? And my mom got so mad at me for interrupting you. And I'm like, I'm going to die, lady. They're passing out snacks and you missed me. <laughs> I was so bummed. You know, my brother's wedding, uh, Steve's wedding, it was like a 100 degree day. And we were in a, a church on the north side with no air conditioning. And I'm the best man. And we're back there dying. And I there was no water around. And we look over and see, you know, the holy water sitting there. You drank the holy water? We cupped our hands and drank the holy water because we were dying of thirst. Oh, my God. I know. I'm still here. It's all good. Well, yeah, it's holy water. Well, yeah, no, but, I mean, but stealing it, not If asking. anything, you're invincible now. <laughs> I'm like an X-Men. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, listen, keep calling in at 312-591-8300. Where you got banned and why. I do have a story that's so good. But it, I think I don't. I think you'll look at me differently if I tell this story. I promise you, it can only go up from here. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you feel any better. But I don't want to tell it because listeners might think differently of me if I tell this story. Here, here, but I want to hold this story hostage. If five people text in and say they'll donate to God Bless the Gravy, 
our food drive that will help people. That this will, story better be good as hell. I swear to God, this story is that good. I'm not exaggerating. This is not a, a, a Brian tease. This story is that good. If five people just text and say, I'll donate some money, even if it's five bucks, to God Bless the Gravy, our food drive for Greater Chicago Food Depository, during, uh, I'll, play Lo- uh, I'll play Lord here, Royals, then I'll tell the story after that in three minutes. And this story, Kenzie, it's good. How old were you? It was only a couple of years ago. Oh, it was only a few years ago? At, at a laser quest in Downers Grove. Why the hell were you at a laser? You don't even have like a... <laughs> A son, why are you there? <laughs> this story's good. And I you swear. You should have been banned for walking in as an adult. <laughs> the Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.